All right, another draft science video presentation. Just keep on coming. So the Piro has left a couple of comments. Subjects I've been over and over with him, and I just don't understand what he doesn't understand. So again, let's go through what we can go through and try to explain. So he says, would you explain how momentum is stored in wood? So, um, Mancha asked me how it's stored inside of the nucleus of an atom also, <laughs> you know, nuclear energy. But okay, I'll explain it. Now, yeah, it, the explanation is going to take a little longer than five minutes, but yeah, I'll go through it quick as possible. All right, how that momentum are gas? How's that momentum are gas? Question mark. So, not a very articulate question again. So, this controversy is over two formulations. Newton's formulation and Descartes' formulation. Just mass times velocity gives you an energy number, okay, units of energy. And it's in kilograms and meters and seconds. So they get a number and it's a quantity of kilograms moving meters and seconds. And so whatever the number is, it's an energy number. And it works perfectly fine. Newton got lots of credit for explaining how the planets work and everything works based on this formula. Didn't need anything else. This did the job perfectly fine. Explained everything on planet Earth just about and everything in the sky pretty much with this formula. Leibniz, Newton's worst enemy, decided no there's something called mv squared for some reason. Now, if Newton had used mv squared, he wouldn't have predicted where all the planets would be and where everything would be. They'd get completely different numbers. So it's a completely different equation, okay, and um, called the living force. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a religious kind of notion. Um, and um, clearly the equation wasn't invented because there was something missing. There wasn't some unexplained asteroid or some unexplained event on earth that we needed to do this and create a different answer so this answer for energy is completely not equal to this answer not the same answer very different answer insanely different answers depending on how fast you make the thing go so now velocity is really important mass not so much that's the clear thing then 100 years or 200 years after that they decide to put a half in front of the, the mv squared. Now that's the real history. Piro won't acknowledge the real history. He won't accept the real history. Um, he'll just keep pretending. So this does not equal that, obviously. I mean, it's a huge difference. 100% difference in the, in the number. So somehow it was invented. It was already 100% wrong. And I would argue, yes, yes, it was already 100% wrong because there was no need for it. It didn't, it didn't work. There wasn't anything wrong with this. This was perfect. Never made a mistake. This formula always gave you the right answer. Not a flaw in it. And we needed somehow to replace it with this modern physics. That isn't all that modern. It's only a few years after Newton's death. Um, and it was 100% off. We fixed it. So now it's only 100% off. <laughs> now it's only completely wrong. It's not ludicrously wrong. So it was ludicrously wrong. Now it's only completely wrong. This is the actual physical, factual history. Okay, so in the 1800s they decided to put the half um, and um, declare this is telling you how much energy something has. Now, even though it gets preposterous answers, even though it tells the professional bowling ball thrower that he should be using an eight-pound ball because it has twice as much energy, but they, he somehow can't believe it. Okay, and the wrecking ball companies, they can't believe it. And even the train people and all the rest of the people will find this will not work. Okay, <laughs> the momentum is going to be the right answer. NASA still says it's using this. Okay, that this is what NASA likes. Okay, and if NASA uses this, then it crashes things, frankly. Uh, and so they can't prove that NASA ever used this formula for deciding how to navigate in space, ever. But anyway... So that's the real history. It's a real controversy. You're claiming something, okay, with your formula. You're claiming the energy is hugely disproportional, that these two things don't equal each other hardly at ever, okay? <laughs> Momentum does not equal energy. Newton thought it did, and Descartes thought it did, and I think it does, 
but you're saying I'm wrong overtly, and you won't present me with any evidence that I'm wrong, though. Every physical experiment you can show, the trains, for example, show momentum got the right answer. No problems. All right, so that's the background. Now he's asking this question that wouldn't matter, right? Whether this formula is right or this formula is right, it doesn't really matter when you're trying to explain where the energy comes from when you burn a piece of wood. So mv squared doesn't make why does wood burn a better answer. mv squared doesn't tell you why anything. It doesn't explain anything. So it wouldn't make any difference. So the fact that he doesn't know how wood works <laughs> That's not my fault, and it has nothing to do with this equation. This equation was not created because wood burned. That's not the history. That's not the truth. That doesn't have anything to do with it. Now, there was a time around the 1800s that they realized that heat, okay, was a byproduct of momentum. That things with momentum could create heat, and that that was the same as the momentum knocking down a pin. So the, the energy that something had, its momentum, you could use it to knock down a pin or you could use it to create heat. So heat was a form of momentum. Now that they figured out around the 1800s, so there's some coincidence there, but it has nothing to do with whether the formula is correct or not. All right, so <clears throat> the theory is that when electrons and protons become atoms, that they store energy. Now, I would argue in the nucleus, the storage is between electrons and protons. That, in fact, so we'll use the big things as to illustrate a proton, a little thing as, a, as an electron. That, that neutrons are essentially electrons and a proton. That a neutron decays into an electron and a proton. Okay, that's what it decays into. And then there's some extra electron, I mean, electro, extra protons to make the object positive. So. The nucleus is positive because it has more protons than it has electrons. Twice as many, generally speaking. But that's how it's held together. So I have argued and give rational explanation why you should believe or you could believe that electrons are actually allow protons to get very close to each other because they divert the electron repulsive force, the proton repulsive force, which allows the force to essentially leak out and allows them to get close to each other, where the electrons repel each other because there's a force that gets trapped between them and, and reflects. So if you have an electron next to a proton, the electron energy will leak out of the proton, and the proton energy will leak out of the electron so they get very close to each other. So you have to accept a certain amount of, of, of reasoning to understand that. But the point is, is you don't have a counter function for the force. You just have virtual photon. So let's understand that if we were to make these virtual photons, the argument would be is that there are these little pieces of energy moving throughout the nucleus. So any time there's a relationship between electrons and protons, there's a whole bunch of this ping pong paddle, the, the electron, and the proton are like ping pong paddles and they bounce the energy around you know they can divert it and they can bounce it those are the two choices the the energy can either be diverted or the energy can bounce so you have two choices of function but the point would be is that the energy the ping pong balls are bouncing between these things all the time so inside of the nucleus there's a bunch of energy bouncing between the electrons and protons Okay, bounce, 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 or bounce, 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 bounce. It doesn't matter how you do it, but it's in there. And then when I take this nucleus, and now I'm going to change the nucleus and make it into a, you know, it's only going to have these two items. I'm going to reduce the size of the nucleus. What happens is, or let's say I'm just going to cut it into two and two. So if I cut this one off and I cut this one off, the fact is a lot of these little bits get out. So I lose, you know, a bunch of the little ping pong balls fly out. So my, my new product has ping pong balls in here and in here, but it doesn't have any trap this way anymore. So all of those got released. And all those little bits end up hitting other atoms, okay, and moving them, causing them momentum. So that gets hot and the thing starts separating and falling apart 
because they're getting hit by more ping pong balls. So the atoms are, there's ping pong balls trapped inside of the atom, the nucleus, and then there's ping pong balls in the electrons out here. So we know the electrons are out here. Okay, the extra ones to deal with the extra protons. And that there's forces inside between those, virtual photons, as they'd be called in physics, in, in puro speak. Virtual photons, that's the energy. That's the momentum. And so when this atom loses an electron, for example, some of those bits of energy can escape, and the electron itself escapes at, of momentum. So when I change the chemistry of something, that is two atoms are combined to each other, and I change that, com that connection, I release some of the force because the electron stays with this atom, and this one loses it, and by losing it, it loses some of its force and then that force hits things. But the electron itself can also be liberated by itself and it will have momentum. So the momentum is built into the forces between them. So the ping pong balls are bouncing, the electron moves out, it gets pushed out by the electron force and that's where the momentum comes from. So the momentum is stored in the pressure of the atoms arrangement. That is the attraction, the attraction of the nucleus and the, you know, is creating a mechanism that enables, enables you to trap a bunch of force in the atom. And that force is released by giving the electron momentum. And then when the electron hits another atom, it hits its electrons and moves its electrons and it moves the whole atom eventually. And so that's how burning wood, for example, releases energy. It takes big atoms that have lots of electrons and it converts them into smaller atoms and lighter atoms, atoms with more um, spatially larger, less matter per square inch. So it converts them into atoms that have less mass per square inch, and those, those move more. And by moving more and banging into each other, they create heat, and by creating the heat, the banging, they create more lighter atoms. The lighter atoms wants to get away. Uh, the whole thing starts falling apart and you have what's called fire and heat. And um, so that's where the momentum comes from. It's trapped inside of the atoms. Uh, it's real momentum though. It's a real mass of electrons and the mass of the electrons moving at a speed. And that mass gets converted into other atoms where you hit their electron with that speed the repulsive force bangs into each other. This one gets the energy. This one moves through here in the atom. The whole atom moves, blah, 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 blah. So that's the explanation for how momentum goes all the way down. Momentum doesn't come from nothing. It comes from the atomic mechanisms ultimately. All right, but obviously for the big objects, that momentum is built into the fact that inside of the nucleuses of all their atoms, <coughs> they have been given permanent velocity. That is, there's a mechanism inside of the neutrons and the protons arrangement that creates a little machine of reflections, okay, that allows when pressure is applied, it pushes back. And so it pushes through pressure. And that's what you're doing when you're giving something velocity. So when a material object is given velocity, it's not given more force. It's just that all of the force bits that are inside of it, say they could be in a circle. Well, they're now then in a circle that's processing. So you can sort of understand it as a procession. That's one way to understand how you could just change something. You have a spinning motion, and you give the spinning motion the capacity to process, you know, by making it a little bit uneven, and you can understand how the spinning motion will cause motion in a direction. It'll start rolling. So velocity is essentially rolling your atomic bits in the sense that now you have an unevenness in their, in their rotation, if we're using rotation. I mean, you can do it with back and forth motion also. You can understand that the motion goes a little longer this way, reflects here, goes a little longer this way, reflects here, goes a little longer this way, reflects here. Same energy, but it's causing motion because of where you're changing the reflection points. Okay, so you can understand that it's just, the idea is, is you're taking energy that would be chaotic, that is you have stuff moving back and forth that way, and you have stuff moving back and forth this way, and you have stuff moving back and forth this way, and when you start making them just like a magnetic material, just like iron, when you start taking those domains and lining them up all going the same way, 
then you end up with motion in that direction. Okay, and the same thing is happening with the idea of velocity of an object. You're just injecting into it a symmetry where things start moving in the same direction. They're lined up in the same direction, and that gives your mass a direction. And at any moment, it can be changed to some other direction just by causing some chaos, causing it to mix again. So if I shoot some energy in, I bend this one back this way, and I bend this one back this way. Well, now I've gone back to going this way and this way and this way, and, you know, I'm back to not moving in a direction. So it's that simple. Uh, as, <clears throat> But again, you know, I can go into much, much, much more detail... But the point is, is it's just a mechanical process. And the mechanics are the little tiny electrons and protons. That's where it all starts. That's where the whole game is, is electrons and protons. That's where the momentum starts, is the stuff, the forces trapped between them. The ping pong paddles, the ping pong balls. The virtual photons. <laughs> okay, the bits of a photon. The elemental material that makes a photon is this ping pong ball stuff and when you have the ping pong balls at a frequency there you have a photon but again it is irrelevant to a conversation about things moving in you know big objects moving in linear linear motion we're talking about those kinds of transfers of their motional energy which is again going to be transferred by force by changing the condition, the, the shape of the atoms, essentially. All right. There is no free energy. So he's making this argument, and as I've pointed out, the physics demands it from your formula. Your formula is a free energy formula, and it's essentially already a proven fact. That's why it's so catastrophically wrong is because it actually is that. Even though Leibniz denied it, and he denied it by saying, momentum, you're not seeing the momentum correctly. Momentum is wrong. Now, he didn't prove it wrong, so he used chicanery and, and convoluted thought experiments to try to ra uh, ravel that as a, as a truth, but he had no hard evidence to defend that notion. So, um, he just said, you're measuring the momentum incorrectly, Okay, as an excuse. Now, I'm sort of getting the same excuses now. That's why it's important to just do the experiment and get this over with. So the simple truth is, okay, is that you can just take a spring and you shoot an object into it. Okay, the object, you, can, you know its velocity and you know its mass. Okay, and the spring is lockable. That is, you compress it and you can lock the spring at that compression. Now, the simple experiment to do is you take the two mass object that's going velocity one so two masses going one v and you compress the spring with it uh just a moment please all right i'll be back okay so <clears throat> so it's a two mass object going one velocity so the heavy object you shoot it into the spring and i'm arguing obviously we know the momentum okay uh, Piro will concede that the momentum of the two mass object going one velocity is equal to the one mass object going two velocities. Okay, so he'll concede that argument, that that is an equality. All right, so you take this this two mass object going one V, and, I need, and these, both of these objects he would concede have... Well, see, he wouldn't concede, so there's no point. He'd say they have the same momentum, but they have different energies. So he'd say, this lighter one going faster, this one has twice as much energy. So 2x the energy, all right? Um, that's what he claims. Now, if I crash the two-mass object going 1v into a spring, he'll probably deny it, okay? So I can't, you know, until we do the experiment. I mean, Stephen Bro just did the experiment and found out I'm right. So, but let's just say you crash it into the spring, you lock the spring at that position, all right? Measures on a ruler, it's right this position, number three, let's say. It compresses it that far. Okay, so now I've locked the spring at that location, put a little lock on it, all right? Now I just replace it with the one mass object. Okay, so now I've put the one mass object on it, 
and now I release the spring. Okay, so I take the lock off and uh, this shoots off and the argument is it's going to shoot off with twice the velocity of the object that went in. Um, and we're going to say that now this has, if this, if the first object that went in had 50 joules, okay, of energy, he's going to say this one mass object going 2V has 100 joules. So clearly 50 joules of energy compress the spring. And now when I let the spring go, I'm going to get 100 joules out. That's the factual implications of his assertion. So I'm asserting, of course, that it's all equal. So of course, when I compress the spring with the two mass object, and then I release it with the one mass object, I'm going to get exactly the same number of joules. I'm going to get exactly the same momentum back. It, this never had 50 joules. This always had 100. This had exactly the same because the momentum is telling you how much energy it has. It's the right description of the energy. And the wrong description is the one that says this is only 50 joules. That's wrong. Okay, so that's the clear experiment, Piero. So there's no argument here. I'm saying your mv squared is a figment. And the one half was added, you know, 100 years later. But I mean, it's a figment. There's no such thing. There's no way to measure it. There's no way to collect it. It doesn't exist in any reality. It's completely fallacious religious garbage put in the middle of physics. It's, <laughs> it's just rubbish. And I don't know how I can make it any clearer that that's what every experiment shows. And you can't show me a single piece of evidence where you're collecting this extra energy, and it's clearly a free energy formula, because all I had to do was put an even lighter object on here. I put an even lighter object, you know, a one-half mass object on here, and now I have 200 joules of energy. I mean, that's the implication of your formula. That's exactly what it says the reality is. I haven't cheated this in any way, so draw me the picture explaining how I made a mistake here. Show, make your assertion. Tell me overtly that you say that this object, the two mass object, will not compress the spring this much. Make that assertion. Make the assertion that if I throw a, a, a one mass, two velocity object and at the spring, it'll only compress, you know, it'll compress much more then when I throw the heavy mass, the two mass, one velocity. So go ahead and make that assertion. I'll ask you to watch the Stephen Bro video that proves me wrong. And I'll ask you to watch it because it proves me right. Okay, because when he did that experiment, they compressed the spring the same amount. You're arguing that they don't. That's what your physics says. That's what you say. That's what your formula. That's the implications of the formula you've chosen to defend. This is a real duality. It's a real conflict. And you keep pretending the two things aren't in conflict. The two things give a different answer to the question, how much energy does it have? They're different frickin' answers. You can't believe in both. I just can't believe he keeps going back to this crap, exerting that there's no conflict here. It's a direct conflict. It couldn't be more black and white. I mean, telling me the thing has half as much energy is not a minor difference. It's a gigantic difference. All right, there is no free energy or free momentum. Well, no one's arguing for free momentum except you. Oh, from the current physics approach to energy. So again, it's just absolutely a lie to tell me that it's not a real controversy, that the two numbers aren't in complete and direct conflict with each other. There's no other way for something to be more of a crash, more of a conflict. They have two different answers to the same question, two very different answers, not a little bit different, insanely different in the case of bullets and other mechanisms. You are just claiming that we claim something that they, we don't claim. So again, I'm sick of this lie. If you say the lie again, I'll just block you, okay? You're just lying. 
I've played their videos claiming it. So don't tell me you're not claiming it. I've played the fucking video. Physics Girl overtly says, I 100% transferred the momentum. That means I gave all of the momentum from this object into this object. And yet, I lost half the energy. How can you create energy? How can you create heat and not lose momentum? It's not possible to not use the momentum to create heat. You can never get heat without using something's momentum. It's not possible. It's an insane assertion on your part to tell me that's not what they're saying. They're overtly saying, I poured all of the paint into the bucket and I spilled half of it. That's overtly what's stated in the fucking video. There's no way you can go around it or pretend it doesn't happen. It's in their direct fucking statements. I'm really curious about the fact that we are stuck, uh, you and I, at acceleration. No, we're stuck at your idiotic defense of a formula that has no defense. There's absolutely no good reason back in 1710 or whenever, no, it was 1684 or something, 1664, when Leibniz proposed this crap. There was no good reason for it. His, his motivations were, I don't like Newton's austere mechanics. I don't like the world Newton is creating. It looks too atheist. That's the exact reason this stupid formula exists. And it was in a form that was so preposterously wrong, mv squared, no half. And yet somehow it got off the fucking ground. Now, it didn't get off the ground when Leibniz was alive because Leibniz died as an idiot. Or he died as a, as a, no, no one showed up at the funeral. Okay, that's how... Leibniz, how many people Leibniz had turned off in his life by being such a scoundrel. All right, and then it got re-dug up by these idiots who wanted to defend free will and other kinds of magical notions. That's the real history, fuckhead. And if you're going to keep asserting there's some other truth, then prove it for a fucking change. Show me a piece, one shred of fucking evidence demonstrating how this has anything to do with Jewel or anything to do with any other goddamn theory. Show me the Jewel argument for MV squared. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> I'm really curious. Okay. Uh, you don't quite accept that physics says about basic acceleration. I don't accept your non-statement of anything that makes any fucking sense. What I've said is it doesn't make any sense to square a velocity. Because gravity is 9.8 meters per second and that it happens continually as long as you're in it, so it's per second, that doesn't give you a reason to square the velocity. It doesn't give you any reason to say it's 9.8 meters squared. That it doesn't give you reason to do. Okay, um, and the meaning of units in general. So again, units are irrelevant. I'll go right back to it again. I'll tell you, a, a Newton is the weight of a stick of butter. Uh, you know, a quarter stick, a quarter pound of butter. A quarter pound of butter is a Newton, the weight of it. If I drop it one meter, the weight that it hits after one meter is a joule of energy. So this is a joule. That. That's a joule, asshole. And you can get that from the momentum formula. The momentum formula is completely convertible into pounds. Okay? And pounds are completely convertible into watts and joules. I've already said this crap. He just ignores the statement. He ignores any obligation to counter-argue it with some sort of physics. Okay. Uh, acceleration and the remaining, the meaning of units in general. So, no, I don't have any problem with the idea of units. 
I have a real problem with your evasion of the fact that units don't have anything to do with squaring crap. <laughs> okay. Oh, damn. How watts is an amount of joules over time. Again, just totally irrelevant. It is a watt. One watt second is one joule second. Joules are also in a quantity of time. You can't say it has one joule of energy unless you're talking about one second that the joule will happen in. If you're talking about the same energy being applied over three hours, then it would be a lot more than one joule, right? One joule over three hours is going to be a lot more than one joule, isn't it, jackass? So this is such an evasion of reality to sit there and make some argument that a joule isn't already a specific amount of time that the energy has to happen in that it can't be a jewel if you extend the time for infinity. Duh. Oh, God damn it. It's just, this is such crap. After all this time for him to make arguments that are this shitty. It's like, what the fuck? You just don't know what logic is and how to apply it at all. You will obey no rational rule here, will you? You will not allow there to be any kind of real brick that we build anything out of. This is why Holiday found you insufferable. is because you can't stay on the subject. You refuse to stay on the subject. Just like velocity is the amount of distance over time. So you just keep saying the same crap like this means anything. Velocity is motion. Yes, it's real movement in three-dimensional space. And time is the way we measure how fast it did it. Yes, so fucking what? That's exactly what momentum is measuring, you shithead. Oh, fuck. And that gives watts a different unit from joule. So he's, he's denying what the Wikipedia page overtly says. So again, I'm supposed to argue with who here? Your own theory? There's a direct equivalency between a joule and a watt second, shithead. It's direct, it's verified, the standards in whatever people have already accepted it. That's what exactly what a watt is, you stupid fuck. Oh, just like velocity is a different unit from distance. I, I mean, there's no point. Specifically, velocity is a compound unit of distance over time and watts is a compound unit of joules over time. Exactly the same thing in the bottom line is it's always momentum. It's always a mass moving a distance in a certain amount of time. Exactly what momentum is. Exactly what it is. Not a little bit like what it is. No, it's exactly what quality of motion, as Newton called it in Descartes, it's exactly what it is. That's exactly how they calculated. Newton knew what a kilogram was. Newton knew what a meter was. And Newton knew what a second was. Fuck. Okay. It's a bit like you reject all mathematics. So again, I'm not going to accept this anymore. This is just such rude, obnoxious horse shit. Okay, I've directly pointed out how your one formula is a piece of crap. It doesn't mean I'm saying 2 plus 2 isn't 4, fuckhead. It doesn't mean that every single mathematical equation is wrong because this one's a pile of shit. God damn it. Could you be a little bit honest once? Oh, God. I just can't. I cannot believe this rubbish. Going and over and over, absolutely, completely off the subject horseshit. He doesn't give a fuck about experiments. He doesn't think experiments answer these questions. He thinks the universe runs based on his mathematics and his mathematics alone. We don't need experiments. We don't need to prove anything. We can just fucking goddamn assert it. This is the asshole metamorph ought to be ragging on. You want people who just make assertions? Well, this is the guy you want. He just makes assertions with no fucking evidence. All right. All right. And don't think mathematics can apply to physics. So again, just an insane exaggeration of the point being made. I explicitly said to him in the other video, 90% of the mathematics is fine. Yes, I don't think some of the abstractions make any sense at all. I mean, unreal numbers, even negative numbers, like minus 1 times minus 3 is somehow plus 4, uh, you know, uh, 4, 2. No, no, I don't think that makes any, I mean, no, uh, multiplied. I shouldn't have multiplied by 1. That doesn't make much sense. So minus 2 times minus 3 is plus 6. 
bullshit it is. <sighs> okay. And I certainly think you should have fixed getting plus and minus wrongly assigned to electrons. That was a huge mistake that you should have fixed. Okay, but I don't think you believe that necessarily. So you just said I believe it, and now you say I don't believe it. So I've overtly told you what I believe. I've said it in direct statements. Most of the mathematics is rational. I said those exact fucking words right to your fucking dumb fucking head. I said those exact fucking words. And here you are saying this shit again. You still see how that's annoying? When somebody has said something directly to you, what they actually fucking believe, and you keep saying they believe something differently? You don't, you can't understand why I would find that insufferable when you do it over and over and over again. God damn it. What's wrong with your goddamn brain that you can't figure out that you wouldn't tolerate this from somebody else? If somebody else just kept saying, you know, you're a, you're a dog anus licker, and that's all they kept saying to you, well, you lick your dog's anus, don't you? Well, you lick your dog's anus, don't you? Well, you, you are a dog or anus licker, aren't you? That you'd finally just shoot the fucker? All right. I don't know what you're thinking. Well, I directly state what I'm thinking. I'm thinking the universe should be explained with real concepts, not fantasy concepts. And I think we should pay attention to experiments and evidence. And I think we should logically go where the evidence points. And we shouldn't make up fake notions. Uh, oh, yeah, we repeated the Eddington experiment nine million times. When you haven't repeated it at all, ever. And you never did it from space where there's 400 times better experimental resolution. 400 times. Not four times. F not 40 times better. 400 times better viewing. And with all of our technology in space for the last 50 years, all of those space shuttles flying around, all the space sh International Space Center, they couldn't put a $50 telescope and do the experiment? So that you wouldn't be lying all the time? Like you'd actually have repeated the experiment with better technology? Better than 100-year-old technology? Before you make your assertions about facts and the truth, that you ought to have some kind of credible evidence before you make assertions that it's the truth, that you ought to be able to produce a video. Fuck. I don't know what you're thinking. So yeah, I don't know how you could miss what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you are religious fanatics. You don't give a fuck about the facts. You don't give a fuck about the truth. You're just propagandizing for bullshit because you need to believe in it. And that's all I see here. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking what other defect could be in your motherfucking brain. You know what computer programming is. You know that it needs to be ordered and logical and you can't violate the rules. You can't put question marks where, you know, something out like commas. You got to be really careful. No extra commas, no extra periods, no extra anything. You got to do everything very precise. And then you talk this kind of in incomprehensible, rubbishy bullshit where you claim there's no controversy here. The, the two things are saying exactly the same thing. 50 is 100. You're just looking at it wrong. How could you not how can you not understand that 50 does equal 100? It's odd to have a controversy about acceleration. So this isn't about acceleration. So again, you can keep pretending. The only part that acceleration plays in this is that's the fudgy number that you've used Hundreds of years after Leibniz, hundreds of years after Leibniz, you've used this fake derivative of acceleration to defend this piece of shit formula. It's a complete piece of shit. It wasn't based on acceleration. It wasn't a derivative of any of, of, of uh, it wasn't formed as a derivative. It was not invented as a derivative of Newton. It has nothing to do with Newton physics. It's completely invented by Newton's worst fucking enemy. And you're claiming it's somehow a natural derivative of Newton's logic. I mean, it's an outrageous lie. <laughs> you know, and you're you're wondering, oh, yeah, yeah. no, so it's not a controversy about acceleration. I'm just claiming you're using the ambiguity of acceleration, the fact that some things accelerate 
instantaneously, like kinetic balls hitting each other. And some things accelerate really slowly, like you have to roll the giant snowball, and it takes a while to get it going. Yeah, things accelerate very differently, and they're just using that fudge factor, where they have a stupid formula that Newton shouldn't have wrote, because he was really just talking about space, uh, F equals MA. Because it doesn't, F doesn't equal MA in every circumstance. <laughs> There's no such thing as an F equals MA in every circumstance. All right, anyway. Um, uh, and I'd like to clear that up. So again, this isn't about acceleration. This is ex about squaring velocity for absolutely no rational reason. You won't give me the reason why Leibniz was right. You won't show me where there was a flaw in Newton's logic that it need to be corrected by Leibniz. You won't show me any cause for the effect. You won't show me any reasoning where momentum fails to get the right answer and the kinetic energy formula gets the right answer. You won't show me any circumstance where that's true. You won't explain a certain any physical circumstance where that's defendable. That momentum is wrong and kinetic energy is right. You won't show me one experiment. You won't show me anything, anything demonstrating any use for this preposterously wrong, silly, stupid formula. It has nothing to defend it except your faith. It's a holy ghost in Christianity. Does anybody have an explanation for what the fucking holy ghost is? No. It's only referenced in the Bible as the Holy Ghost. It's not referenced as, well, and then we needed a Holy Ghost. And so God made the Holy Ghost to sit between him and Jesus. No, there's no explanation. It's just something that's supposed to exist. Well, that's all this formula is. It's a piece of shit. It's a fucking Holy Ghost in the middle of your physics that makes absolutely no sense. And you just say, it has to be there because God said so. So there's nothing to clear up. You're denying the controversy. You deny the history. You deny the fact that you have no experiment defending the stupid formula. And you're just asserting it's right. And how am I supposed to react? Except, fuck, are you paying no attention? <laughs> no attention at all, right? I can play the videos over and over of the experiment and you'll just keep denying them. So let me do that one time. Let me just replay the, the Lewin thing. You know, okay, here we are. All right, so um, I won't bother playing the first part where he does the, the two same sides. No choice. Nature can deal with kinetic energy one way or another, but it cannot finagle momentum. So it must give... So, so you see, when he says finagle kinetic energy, he means, yeah, it's all fungible, so we'll just call it heat. And, but we won't measure any heat. We'll just call it deformation, but we won't measure. We won't show you the deformation. We'll just pretend it went away or it showed up. We don't have to account for it all. So it's totally unaccountable. But momentum, no, you can't make that unaccountable. You always have to account for the momentum. So that is ironic. All right. So I thought it was... Yeah, so those are the numbers for the equal size cart. So we just did two equal size carts, shot them both ways. So there's a spring holding them to, you know, compressed. The two carts fly apart. They're both the same mass, so they fly apart in what essentially is the same exact momentum, the same exact energy, okay? The MVs and the MVs are the same. So um, the kinetic energy formula says they both have the same joules and the um, momentum formula says obviously same energy. Now we put an uneven, now we put, we change it and we put a heavy cart on one side and a light cart on the other side. Okay, so the only difference is one weighs twice as much now. Same spring. So we know the spring produces 100 joules this way and 100 joules that way. And the only way we can change that is somehow we have to shoot more energy one way to have less energy the other way or whatever. You know, you can't you can't change, if one side doesn't change, the other side obviously can't change because of Newton's opposite re, you know, reaction law. And so if you're gonna say that's not a law either, then you can do that, but I'd say horseshit on you. Okay, there we go. So 
So there you got your numbers. Twice as slow. Okay, so the 400 means it took 400 milliseconds. So so it's just twice. So the velocities now are halved. Okay, one thing left still at the same exact 193. That was 90, 194 before. So the light side left with exactly the same energy as before. Same energy went this way. Same exact joules went this way. Somehow, by the kinetic energy formula, only 50 joules went this way. Now, by momentum, it's exactly right. There are the same still. Momentum says you still have the same joules here and you have the same joules here. Same amount of pounds of energy went both ways. The cart has the energy. If I compress a spring with the heavy object, it'll compress it just as far as the light object will with the faster velocity. I haven't lost any energy. Nothing at all happened here that is at all weird. Obviously, the heavy thing moves slower, but it has the same energy because it has mass. And mass and velocity are equally important. All right, so how do you explain how half the energy was lost? Where did half the energy disappear to? Did the spring catch on fire? Did the track uh, warp because of all the heat? Where did 50% of the energy on the left side disappear to? Where can I find that 50%, that 50 joules of energy? Where did those 50 joules of energy go? There's absolutely no evidence that they went anywhere, but exactly where we see them is in the cart. So he just keeps denying this means something. This experiment means, yes, it means something, Piero. It proves your formula has no meaning. It's obviously true that the heavier cart does not have half the energy. It's obviously not true that 8-pound bowling balls have twice as much energy as 16-pound bowling balls. It's absolutely proven fact in the real world, and your nonsense formula is just that absolute fucking nonsense. Can't be justified by any reasoning at all. I haven't received one fucking video from anybody showing me the kinetic, extra kinetic energy being recovered. Show me that that thing has 50% less energy. Show me that the other thing has 50% more, 100% more energy. Show me the experiment where you collected the energy and proved that it lost real energy. I can't make it any clearer. I mean, unless I go all the way down to what, six year olds? I should, I should explain it to a six year old for fuck's sake. How dumb do you want to be? I mean, how. How much do you want to feign? You're, you're too stupid to see that the evidence is declarative and clear and that you have a real burden to explain yourself instead of quit, keep asking me to explain something? I don't have to explain anything. You have to explain it. The conflict is real and you're providing no rational reason for me to understand why you're right. Give me a rational reason to believe MV squared is correct. And again, the formula was first formed for the first hundred years. It was mv squared, no half. Explain to me how that had any chance of being correct. Why was Leibniz right when his, his equation was 100% inaccurate? Why do you declare him correct when you already have it conceded? You had to put a half in front of it because it was so far fucking off. I mean, I can't believe I have to have this argument with fucking rational people. Are you all this fucking dishonest? Are you all this religiously devoted? Physics must, everything physicists say has to be true. Oh, you're defending absolute shit. And you're doing it trying to wave your integrity flag? You have no integrity. No evidence. No reasoning. Nothing but insults. You don't understand. No, you don't understand. And you do understand. You're just liars. I mean, again, uh, what, what, how, what other explanation is there? I overtly said to Piro, in my own words, direct statement to him, 90% of the math is okay. It's just that some of it is absolute shit. I made it clear why I'm objecting this because the formula has no merit. It has no history defending it. It has no evidence defending it. It has nothing in its defense. Nothing. It's complete, irrational crap. That's why I don't believe in it. <sighs> it 
that's all I can do. I mean, I, I there's just no, there's no, there's nothing. You people are just, you're, you're, you know, just, you can't be reasoned with. You, 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 you will not, uh, you will not bend to logic. You'll just keep insisting. I'm wrong. Why? Why am I wrong? What? Where did I cheat the experiment again, bro? He couldn't. He couldn't resist just overtly saying, "Gary's cheat." He called it. The experiment is a cheat somehow. Shooting an object <laughs> into a spring is cheating to measure its energy. Uh, I mean, fuck you, people. Fuck. There's, nothing, there's no reasoning. This is just idiotic. You have no evidence. You have no reasoning. You have no logic. You have absolutely nothing to defend your unicorn propositions. This is just like some UFO guy saying, I was screwed by the aliens. They came down and screwed me and blah, 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 blah. And he's saying, you have to believe me. Why do I have to believe you? Why? Do you have anything to show me? A condom? Anything? <laughs> you know, I mean, I would assume aliens would have safe sex. <sighs> Shit. Even that. See, you can make logical arguments. Like, oh, come on. You're really going to tell me the aliens will come down here and they wouldn't wear a condom? I mean, come on. Get real. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you're not going to sell me on that horse shit. Okay. That's enough. I, there's nothing. I, I just... I've done my job as, a, as an intelligent being on Earth. I presided, I provide you the reasoning, I provide you the experimental evidence, I provide you every component you need to understand, I, I provide you the history to understand how physics just made a mistake. It's, it's a mistake. They shouldn't have done that. That was dumb. It was an error. They chose the wrong side. They, you know, boo-boo. Whoops. That's all you have to admit. Yeah, that isn't too good. The, the reasoning isn't too good. Just admit it. What's the big deal? Really, I promise you, you won't have a heart attack. You know, your nuts won't fall off. Nothing really bad will happen to you if you just admit it's not very good physics. Not very good science. Science should be supported by evidence. It shouldn't be just declarations because they made a mistake 200, 300, 400 years ago. Oh, we have to live with the mistake forever. We have to defend the mistake. Isn't that all you're doing? You're just defending a mistake. Why? Because your God is infallible. Oh, that's why. Of course, I mean, you know, of course, the obvious answer. The infallible God couldn't write a silly Bible that has errors in it. Oh, that couldn't happen. Uh, fuck. Anyway, so this has been a draft science video presentation. Hmm. Endeavor to persevere. <laughs> it's all I can do.